In this week's tutorial, we'll show you how to make a drop spindle, which is a pretty simple tool that will allow you to spin your own yarn. A drop spindle is made up of essentially two parts, the shaft and the whirl. And as you can see here, the whirl could be wood or a CD, and the shaft is something round like a dowel rod or something similar. We'll be using scrap wood to make our drop spindle, so I have a 4x4 four four inch square and a 3 8 of an inch dowel rod. I also have an example of a larger whirl here, and this one has its slot pre-cut with a laser cutter. We'll need a saw because we'll be cutting this slot by hand later. We'll also need a little cup hook to help hold the yarn in place as we spin it, and a marking tool like a pen or a pencil for making our marks and measurements. It's a good idea to have a clamp or two around, and you may not need it, but better safe than sorry. You'll also need a ruler to help with some of our measurements, and a drill with a drill bit that matches the diameter of the dowel rod you're using. So I'm using a 3 8 of an inch drill bit and dowel rod. You'll need some wood glue, a little bit of sandpaper per usual, and some fiber to spin into yarn. We're using wool roving. We'll start by preparing our whirl. The first step is to find the center of our square, which is where the shaft will be inserted. So we're going to start by drawing a diagonal line from one corner to the other, flip it around and draw another diagonal line, which gives us a nice X. The center of that X is the center of your square and where we will drill. Next, clean up the edges of your whirl with some sandpaper, just to get rid of some of the splinters and then you're ready to cut the slot that will hold your yarn in place. So we'll find the midpoint on one side, which is at two inches in this case, and we'll draw about a half an inch to an inch long mark. This will be the mark where we will saw our slot. Carefully saw along the mark that you just made. I'm holding mine up, but feel free to clamp this down if you'd rather. Once complete, make sure that your slot is wide enough to actually hold yarn. You may need to widen the slot up with a little bit more sawing. Now we're ready to move on to drilling our hole for the shaft. Go ahead and lay down some waste board so you don't drill through your table and find the center of your X and drill all the way through your whirl. You can sand this hole a little bit to clean it up, but it's not absolutely necessary. Next, we'll prepare our shaft by marking 12 inches on our dowel rod and cutting that 12 inch piece off. You could have a longer shaft and that's totally fine, but 12 inches should be enough for the amount of yarn we are going to spin. Now both our shaft and our whirl are complete. The next thing we need to do is slide the shaft through the hole we made in the whirl and move the whirl down about four inches. It could be more or less depending on what you feel comfortable with. Then we'll add a little wood glue, and I like to use my finger to get the wood glue into all the cracks and crevices on both sides of the whirl and shaft. Then come back with a wet paper towel to clean up the excess wood glue. You can wait until your wood glue dries, or you could go ahead and add your cup hook. If you're adding your cup hook before the wood glue dries, be a little extra careful. We're going to go to the side of the shaft that is shorter and we're going to screw the cup hook in by hand. And now we have a completed drop spindle. So we're ready to begin spinning some yarn. Start by pinching and pulling a small piece of your fiber and twisting it up until it resembles yarn. Now attach that hand twisted piece to your cup hook with a simple overhand knot and you're ready to begin the bulk of your spinning. Repeat the pinch and pull method that you use to start this yarn and then spin the drop spindle in a counterclockwise motion or clockwise. Just make sure that you're spinning the same way each time you do this. Once you've spun your yarn to the desired diameter, you can place it in that slot that we sawed earlier and then wrap the formed yarn underneath the whirl around the longer part of the shaft. Here's another example of a drop spindle with more yarn on it so you can see how it's all been wrapped around and then fed back through the slot to continue spinning. Most people when using a drop spindle will sit down so they can park the shaft between their legs as I'm doing here. Then pinch, pull, spin, park, and repeat. During the pinching and pulling process, it can be pretty easy to pull the bulk of your fiber away from the yarn you just spun, so go slowly and carefully to avoid that mistake. Once you have enough yarn that you need to wrap it around your shaft, again, place it through the slot that we saw earlier, wrap it around the shaft, back through the slot, and around the cup hook 
so that you can begin the entire pinch, pull, spin, and part process as before. Repeat this process as many times as you like until you reach your desired amount of yarn. Once you have your yarn completed, you can hold it in place on the drop spindle until it's ready for finishing. The yarn now needs to go through a process of finishing, which involves soaking and drying the yarn so that it holds its shape. This video is too short to include all of that, but we'll put a link to some tutorials for that in the description. Here are some other examples of drop spindles we've previously made with larger or smaller whorls and longer or thicker shafts. Get creative with the materials that you use to make your drop spindle. As always, thanks for watching, have fun, and keep making.